Selamat sore semuanya. Selamat berjumpa kembali di acara webinar University of Sussex. Um, mungkin sebagian pernah ikut ya. Jadi Sussex ini um, university yang terletak di kota Brighton. Ranking satu dunia untuk bidang development studies. Development studies juga termasuk atau mencakup beberapa bidang studi lainnya yang saya sempat mungkin sempat sebutkan juga di uh, apa di IG ya. Nah kali ini kita kedatangan salah satu dosen senior lagi. Hi Lindsay, thank you for joining and thank you for sharing your your lecture with uh, potential students. who will be your students at Sussex later. Um, nantinya kita juga akan bicara dengan dua alumni. Setelah bicara dengan uh, Lindsay, kita akan berbicara dengan alumni. Di sini juga saya didampingi dengan Miss Lilian Chua, uh, I.O. Officer ya, dari University of Sussex. Um, banyak yang bertanya kalau kita bicara mengenai development studies itu sebetulnya saya tuh nantinya kerjanya apa atau sebetulnya mencakup apa saja bagaimana saya bisa menjajaki karir saya tidak melulu mengenai pekerjaan yang spesifik atau bahkan lingkupnya kecil sebetulnya kalau kita bicara mengenai uh, development studies kita punya lingkup yang sangat luas ya um, kita bisa punya peluang pekerjaan yang sangat baik juga hal yang tidak umum program yang memang tidak uh, tidak banyak uh, karena sebagian besar berpikiran bahwa oh development studies nantinya saya akan uh, terbatas sekali nah kali ini kita akan bedah uh, dibantu dengan dua alumninya Mbak Atika dan Um, satu lagi adalah kok saya jadi lupa namanya Mbak Atika dengan Mbak Nadira kayaknya saya udah lihat ini namanya nih Mbak Nadira Mbak Nadira ada ya ada Pak oh, halo Mbak ah. Nadira terima kasih sudah bergabung nah nantinya kita akan undang juga Mbak Nadira baik um, Mbak Atika juga sudah ada ya sepertinya ya sudah Pak oh halo Terima kasih. Ini dua-duanya orang sibuk ini. Wah, kesempatan yang sangat baik bisa ditemani, bisa berbagi cerita nantinya ya. Um, Oke, okay, kita akan mulai. Uh, Lindsay, I'll uh, welcome you. So, you may start your lecture. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm just going to share some slides. Just give me one moment while I share my screen with all of you. Mm-hmm. Can I just check that you can, let me just put it on the slide show. Can I just check with you that you can all see that clearly? Yes, all good. Yes, you can. Okay, um, and good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here um, to meet you briefly today. My name is Dr. Lindsay McLean, and I'm a a lecturer um, in both the International Development and the Anthropology Departments at the University of Sussex. And I also convene one of the specialist master's degrees that we have in international development, which is a master's degree in gender, violence and conflict. Um, And just to share with you that um, as well as being a lecturer at Sussex, I actually also work part time as a consultant in the international development sector. So I have experience as well with working with United Nations organizations, non-government organizations and and donor agencies as as well. Um, And that's something that you if you come to Sussex, you will find that quite a lot of the staff and the lecturers like me, we are also involved in consultancy and research in the real world and policy advice. So that's something I just wanted to share with you. So welcome this morning. I'm going to talk for um, 
about 20 minutes, 25 maximum. I'm going to talk both about international development at Sussex, um, why study international development, what kind of master's degrees we offer, and what kind of place the University of Sussex is um, for postgraduate students. And then I'm going to talk specifically about some of the careers that our previous postgraduate students have gone on um, to work, to work in their careers at their the jobs they've been doing after their time at Sussex, because I think that's probably very important for you also to, to hear about. So firstly, just um, I think all of you here today probably know what international development is because you are very interested and you've just had the introduction. Um, but I would say that um, for me and for many of the students, it's a real passion to develop, in, to, to study international development because it really is about all the global challenges that, um, that we face across the world um, today, from poverty and rising inequality in many countries, climate change and its, and its impacts uh, on our societies, about access to healthcare, who gets what healthcare, who gets the coronavirus vaccine and when, for example, this is an international development issue about human rights um, and protecting people through international law, about migration, um, understanding migration and the movement of refugees as well as economic migrants, um, thinking about the impacts of resource extraction, so mining and, and um, oil exploration, for example, in different parts of the world, thinking about various dimensions of social injustice, whether that's based on gender or ethnicity or class or caste or religion, um, thinking about social justice and injustice, peace building and conflict. Um, so thinking about um, conflict across the world and, and violence across the world and how we can work to prevent that violence and build peace. Um, the subject I work on, um, gender-based violence, and also how that intersects with violence based on race, for example. And then also thinking more and more about who is involved in international development, not just UN agencies and, and governments, but also the private sector, um, as well as sort of charities and, and non-government organisations. So it's a really um, important subject. And at Sussex, International development is not just about, like we might traditionally think about Africa and Asia, it's actually about the whole world. So there are development issues in my country, um, in my town, around inequality and social justice, for example. So these issues are truly global. And so studying these issues gives you knowledge about them, but also skills. Um, so you can work in, in different um, organizations um, to, to address these, these issues that face the human population. Why come to Sussex specifically to um, study international development? Well, Sussex is well known for international development, as I'm sure you know. Um, we still, um, this just last week, we found out that we are still number one in the world for development studies. Um, so we're the first university globally, and it's been like that for six years. And I think that reflects that we are uh, a long-standing and established center for development studies with nearly 150 different um, scholars, so lecturers and professors on campus. I also think it reflects um, some special aspects of Sussex, which I really love myself and why I teach here. Firstly, that we're interdisciplinary. So if you do development studies, you'll be taught by economists and anthropologists and geographers and international relations scholars and, and sociologists. We have a very critical approach um, um, to the world of international development. And we also think quite a lot about um, colonization and the colonial history, particularly of a country like my own, and how the legacies of colonialism continue. And we're also applied, which means we think a lot about policy and practice, um, not just theory, but how can we apply our knowledge to make a real difference in the world? Um, I think we have very good teaching at Sussex. We all have a lot of teacher training. We all exchange um, a lot about teaching um, and we do very sort of interactive um, teaching. 
And also we have a lot of extra lectures and opportunities um, to listen to speakers from United Nations, from different organisations who come and talk at Sussex. And I think very importantly, we have a very diverse and very active um, population of students. Um, I love teaching at postgraduate level because I have students who are, you know, some, some are young in their 20s, some are in their age 30s, age 40s, some have worked for many years, some are just out of university, and it's a very, and from all over the world, um, from, I, I have students on my degree from every continent of the world, and it makes the wonderful, diverse student body. If you come um, to study um, at Sussex, sorry, let me just bring that back, you will be in, if you study international development, you will be in the School of Global Studies. So all of our university is organized into schools. And in the School of um, Global Studies, we have the International Development Department, as well as International Relations, Anthropology and Geography. So you're part of a, a, um, a group of subjects that study social issues and study global issues. So we also have staff as well as international development staff. You have specialists in the other departments. Um, we have nearly a thousand undergraduates um, from about 60 countries and more than 400 um, postgraduates each year, usually from around 70 different countries globally. And again, our teaching staff are also diverse. So we have teaching staff from different countries, different nationalities. Um, and they all are engaged around the world. So myself, I work mainly in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, uh, for example, um, and about to go to Vietnam with a project with UN Women. So I'm also going to be working a little bit in Southeast Asia. Um, some of our key areas, like where do we really specialise? Where have we got a good, good research um, and where we're doing policy and consultancy work? One of those areas is the area I work on, gender, sexuality and conflict. Um, we also have a specialism in um, sort of human rights and looking at welfare, social welfare issues. And our head of department, Grace Carswell, she does research in that area. We also specialise looking at markets um, and looking at labour, labour rights and, 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 and how people are working in the informal and the formal sector. And also looking at issues of finance and how we're financing um, development and social development issues. We have a speciality on the environment, um, particularly looking at the use of environmental resources. Um, but also looking at protest, looking at environmental movements. So whether they are indigenous movements in Latin America or whether they are climate change marches across the world. Um, we also have a, we actually have a, 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 a well-known centre on migration and mobility that's funded by the UK government. And we have several research projects looking at uh, migration, economic migration, um, as well as refugee refugee issues and, and displacement. Um, and also we have quite a, a strength as well in looking at um, looking at global development and looking, sorry, let me just go back there, looking at, um, you know, what is the future of the development sector? Who are the new actors in the development sector? How do we... Um, how do we kind of challenge the development sector to do better? Because, it, you know, we, we have had some important set success globally in reducing poverty, in addressing social justice issues, but there's still a long way to go. So we're also looking at how can we engage? And we look at, for example, things like cooperation between countries in Africa. It's not just Africa in the UK, but how can countries in Africa cooperate? How can, how can India cooperate with Afghanistan? So how can we have those co cooperation between different countries as well? And also at Sussex, um, as I said, said at the beginning, we also um, engage beyond academia. Many of us are involved in projects and um, policy advice. Um, beyond the university. So this slide just shows you some examples of some of the different engagements that we have, such as my colleague Peter Newell in the middle there. 
Um, he was involved in um, working for the United Nations to help develop a new United Nations agreement, a tre treaty um, to stop the proliferation of fossil fuels in terms of um, trying to prevent further climate change. Um, my colleague, Beth Mills, who works a lot in Southern Africa, she was um, leading for the South African government a legal reform project um, to particularly tackle poverty amongst um, LGBTI um, people, so lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and, and intersex people. Um, myself, um, I've been um, advisor to the UK House of Commons, to our, our, our parliament, um, trying to examine the UK's work internationally to prevent gender-based violence. So we're all kind of, many of us are engaged more widely than academia. So just to give you an overview of the master's degrees that uh, we, we run at Sussex, um, these are all, I think one really nice thing about Sussex is that they all have an interdisciplinary aspect to them. So most of these degrees, as I said, you'll be taught by anthropologists and economists and international relations staff. So this is the current set of degrees that we have. And you can see here that we have human rights, social development, migration and development, environment development and policy, gender violence and conflict, food and development, a broader degree on gender and development, um, the MA in Anthropology of Development and Social Transformation looks at different development issues and how social change takes place, climate change and development, and one that sort of combines looking at development issues and social change, but also looks at the role of the media um, in that. In terms of how the degrees are structured, um, if you... Um, if you come to Sussex, basically every master's degree in the autumn term, which starts in September until December, every degree has two core modules. So everybody on that degree takes those two specialist modules, which are the foundation for the degree. So on this slide, you can see um, examples there. Um, for example, if you are taking the master's in environment development and policy, your two core courses would be one course about the political economy of the environment and a second course, which would be about development theory and particularly looking critically at development theory. Um, if you did the MA in human rights, you would do one degree around human rights and the politics of culture. So that's looking at issues like um, you know, uh, our traditional practices that may be, be seen as, as harmful by people maybe in the West, but, but by local people are not seen as harmful. How do we deal with those kind of issues um, in terms of human rights? And the second course is on international relations, looking at international human rights, um, law and policy and practice. So that's in the autumn term. And then whichever degree you are on in the second term which is which is february until may you can choose two options from a, a list and this is the typical list um, that we have each year um, and some of these are a little bit more suited to some degrees than others but it just allows you to build on your core teaching and go in which way you want so whichever thing will will interest you you can see here there's 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 specialist courses around refugees and displacement um, the specialist courses on climate change, on human trafficking, on, on children and youth. Um, so there's all kinds of different specialist degrees here that you can, you can uh, specialist modules you can do in your second term. Also in your second term, you do, um, let me just add this in here, you do a, a research methods course. So you learn about different research methods you can use um, to research social issues and then you'll also be doing a dissertation a long dissertation after this so this also builds those research skills and also professional skills you would need to do your dissertation research but also that you would also need as a professional working in international development so you can see there's courses here around different research methods so quantitative methods participatory methods as well as some more practical um, skills as well around livelihoods analysis, for example, and dealing with data. 
So then in the summer term, so that's from um, May until the end of August, um, which is the deadline to submit your dissertation, you do a 10,000 word dissertation, you get a, a supervisor, so a member of, of staff to uh, mentor and supervise you over those months and support you as you do your dissertation. You can either do your dissertation, um, you can do some um, collection of data and some primary research um, and do your dissertation, or you can write a, like a long essay for your dissertation, or you can do a dissertation with a placement. So that's where you actually go and work with an organisation for the three months and you do your dissertation alongside volunteering for um, an organisation. So just to give you an example, um, on this slide, these are just a few examples of the kinds of organisations and locations where um, master students have done a placement or an internship over that three months. So you can see there, some are in the UK, some are in different countries globally. Um, there's a much longer list than this, but this is just an example. So you can see that people have gone to work with education NGOs on on peace. Um, at the end, they're raising voices. That's a, 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 um, an organization that works on gender equality and gender based violence in Uganda. Um, so you can see here there are many different places where students have gone to do a placement and to, to, to also do their dissertation research at the, at the same time. So just briefly, just to say that I think Sussex is a very supportive place. We have a lot of um, mechanisms and options to support you academically, as well as to support you if at any time you have a financial issue or a, a, fa a family issue or a health issue. We also have a lot of support on campus. So we, we take a lot of time to give you feedback, but we also have study skills workshops and resources. There's a centre for those um, studying an English language for the first time to give you extra support with your English language and writing skills. And we also have mentorships, other students supporting um, our postgraduate students and the Student Life Centre that can help you with any other challenges. Um, it's just a, a couple of quotes here about teaching. Um, I think it's something we we are passionate about. We, we take our teaching very seriously um, at Sussex and we really, you know, in, in enjoy engaging students interactively and using different teaching methods so you can get the best out of your, um, your time at Sussex. Another kind of really key thing is the community. So as well as studying, you can get involved in so many different activities and events. Um, students are very active. So we have an international development society, which is active. We have films and lectures. Um, students um, in the previous years, they, they set up a cafe, um, you, recycling food waste. Some students have set up a student housing initiative. So there's lots of things to get involved with, as well as many research seminars that we put on as well, where different Academics come from different parts of the world to talk over Zoom or in person about their latest research. So you also get access to latest research. So just for the last few minutes, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the careers um, that our postgraduates, our master's students go on. And this is just, again, a, a sample. But basically, um, people go on to a variety of careers. Um, so there you can see that one place that people go is to United Nations agencies or international financial institutions. So you can see there the kind of jobs people have gone to work for um, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, someone there became the, the, the country office director in Sudan. You've got on that list there, someone became a peace building specialist in Ethiopia with the United Nations Development Programme. Someone became a senior researcher at the International Labour Organization. Um, someone became a specialist at the Asian Development Bank um, in, in the Philippines. People, some people have gone on to government positions. So, for example, that could be working with um, uh, a donor agency, so the, 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 the development ministry of a government, such as um, one student who um, went on to work um, for the Japanese 
aid, JICA, but in the China office. Um, one person went to work for the Swedish aid program working on um, gender and peace issues. And someone else here um, became an ambassador. So went to work for the diplomatic um, service in Israel um, and had a posting to Japan. Um, quite a few um, students also go to non-government organizations. So you can see there's some jobs with international NGOs like PLAN that works with adolescent girls and boys um, and Care International. I should also say that some students decide to establish their own charitable organization. Um, so one of the graduates established, she was from Rwanda, and she worked with another graduate, a British woman, and they set up a, a charity um, to support survivors of genocide in, in Rwanda. So they actually established their own organization. Some um, go on to do consultancy work, a bit like I myself do. So getting longer or shorter term positions as a consultant. Um, I've just been in touch with uh, an ex-student of mine who now works for the Ministry of Women and Child Development in India, for example. Um, someone has gone to Hitachi to work as a, a consultant on energy and sustainability. And then some people go into research careers. Uh, they may go into more of a research institute or a think tank. And some go on to further academic studies. So they go on to do a doctorate, a PhD in the UK or elsewhere. And some of them then become um, academics. So just finally, I just wanted to put a few words from some students so you can hear for yourself. Um, I'm not going to read these out. I'm going to leave them just on the, on the, on the screen for a couple of moments, just so you get a chance to hear the words of some of our students. Okay, I've just got one more, a couple more here. So I'm going to move to, this is a previous graduate of the degree that I teach, Annalise, who's from the Netherlands. And then finally, um, this was another student of mine, Sonakshi, who uh, I was in touch with recently, who is, um, who is in India, um, went back to India, and you can see her there also, her, what she wrote to me as well. So I think just to to summarize, I think that, I mean, we stay in touch with our graduates from Sussex. We often have Facebook pages or different ways we stay in touch. And I would say that they go into all kinds of places and spaces to make a difference to the sort of social justice and international development issues um, that we talk about. Many go back to their own countries. Um, some will get a posting to a, a different country and have the experience of going overseas. But overall, we have a very good um, employability um, uh, rate in Sussex. You know, most graduates go on, postgraduates go on very quickly to get jobs and careers. And also at Sussex, you will get support. So we have a good career service in the university but also in the School of Global Studies, we have quite a lot of careers days and careers events where you can, other postgraduates will come back and talk to us about um, what they've been doing and, and answer your questions as well. But I'm very willing to take any, any questions that you, you may have, um, anything at all. So thanks very much.
mungkin ada teman-teman yang ingin bertanya, silahkan boleh open mic-nya, atau boleh langsung menuliskan pertanyaannya di chat. And you can put questions in the chat if you don't want to speak. <laughs> That's also fine. So, Lindsay, just a general question. Um, sure. In general, like uh, the number of nationalities within your class, within your program, mm -hmm. how many nationalities are they? So if I look, I give you the example of the degree that I teach on gender violence and conflict. This year, we are 38 students. Um, 12 are from the UK and the other 26 are from different countries. This year, if I give you an example, we have um, a student from Bangladesh, from Yemen, from Malaysia, uh, from Burundi, from Nigeria. <laughs> from Peru. Um, Everywhere, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just to give you an example of, of, of what it looks like this year, and it's, it's mm. fantastic to teach students from so many different backgrounds, and they all bring something to the room. It's really wonderful. Yeah. What do you expect from a students when they're joining your class? I know that you, you will expect that um, they will have certain way of thinking or they are actively contributing towards the uh, lecture. So in, in general, most of the lectures within your faculty, uh, what would they expect from a students? Yeah, so I mean, if I just, um, I give you an example of, again, from the degree that I teach, what it looks like um, in a practical term. Um, so we, um, as I say, in the autumn term, you have two modules. You have three hours of um face-to-face -face teaching each week, as well as the opportunity to come to an additional space, which is run by me and the students as well. And that's about relationship building and working together and sharing experiences and doing talks. So that's more of a sort of social academic space. And then you have three hours for each module. I teach one of the modules and in that three hours um, with a break in the middle, the way I teach will have a mixture. So students will do some reading. So the expectation is that you would do some reading beforehand, um, usually three, three, three different articles um, of reading each week in preparation. And then some weeks um, you will prepare something yourself. So maybe one or two weeks during the term, you'll work with another one or two students to do a kind of case study about the, the areas we're looking at. So we'll have like each week, then we have in the three hours, we have like a, a 15 minute presentation or talk by the students about something that they have um, investigated themselves. So it could be a team of maybe three students working together. So that brings in student experience into class, but also is practice because at the end of the term, they will do a, a presentation as a small assessment. Also in class, I will then spend, I'll, I'll give some like mini lectures. So I don't talk for like one hour nonstop because I think it's a bit boring and people don't absorb. So I would maybe talk for 15, 20 minutes. Then we'll have a discussion, maybe in pairs or in threes. Sometimes we will do a, something interactive and participatory, you know, where we're talking together and doing an exercise. Um, then again, I might, then I'll, I'll give another sort of mini lecture. So, and then maybe we'll do um, a discussion in the whole group. So we tend to teach like that. And, and yes, we're hoping that everyone will participate. Um, we do a lot to um, make people feel comfortable because we understand that some people are speaking in their second or their third language. So we also, um, sometimes people will contribute by um, talking, but sometimes we will do like, um, you know, using like a sticky note and we'll collect ideas on a board so people can write their ideas and then we can discuss. So we used lots of different methods to, me, me, to, to so people can participate in a way that they feel comfortable for, for themselves. So we're expecting you to read and be open-minded um, to participate because your opinions and your experiences are also really valuable um, and to yeah to be open-minded um, 
maybe to change your mind about some things and, and learn new things. I see. Right. So um, I would say in any way, they'll have to contribute. They have to be active in a class. Yeah. Let me let me bring the alumni now. Um, I have one question for all alumni. Um, Mbak Nadira, how difficult was it to get an A? To get an A? <laughs> it was very difficult. <laughs> okay, that's it. Enough. Yeah. Okay, just, just that short answer is enough. Mbak Atika, was it easy, difficult, or medium? Difficult. Difficult. Okay. Um, let us the lecture then. Lindsay, why it is difficult? <laughs> so it's difficult because this is um, postgraduate study. It's not undergraduate study. So you are really trying to build skills and knowledge and expertise in an area. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that is, is challenging. We're asking challenging questions at postgraduate level. We're expecting you to think for yourself, um, to develop your own ideas, analyze data, you know, to do that. So that's that's quite a challenge. And I think usually what I see, I don't know about Nadia and Atika's experience, but often we see a progression during the year. So especially for students that might be starting for the first time in the UK education system, writing in English, sometimes the system's a bit different from maybe Indonesia, you know, for all of you. Mm -hmm. But then the lecturers spend time supporting you. So for my course, for example, we don't just have one big assessment at the end. They will, do a, they will write something already in the sixth week, just a small thing, and then I give feedback. And that helps to people to understand, okay, what is expected from writing a paper, a term paper in, um, in UK system, in English. And with, with, with the support from the lecturers and also, if you want, from the English Language Academic Service, what I see is that students often do this, you know, so they might find the first assignment challenging and then they, they listen to feedback, they get very specific feedback and then they will improve. So this is what I find. Nadia, Atika, I'm not sure if you're nodding, if that's your experience, but I think it is hard, but people show big progression as well. Okay. Let me give, let me give a short question again. But Nadira, did you enjoy studying or do you prefer your career now? I like both though. But, uh, you know, when I uh, studied, I miss, you know, working. But when I'm working now, I really miss studying. So I think it's very, very normal to, to feel it, right? But yeah, I really, really enjoyed my time in Sussex. It was like very, very fun one full year of, you know, like studying and playing at the same time. Okay. But Atika? Um, a, quick a quick question. Different question for you. A different okay. question for you. Okay. Okay. Um, would you go back for PhD or would you pursue another career? Um, well, that's two different questions. If I go back to study, I would do another master's degree, not a PhD. Uh, because I don't think I'm an academia and I think I would still want to build expertise in other area. Mm -hmm. So uh, but if you ask me whether I want to work more or... Uh, another degree it depends on the opportunity that comes in the future I'm not you know like I don't really have I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying my work I really like what I'm doing I'm learning not in an academic way I'm learning a lot uh, the study the master has been really helpful but there are things that you learn by doing a job as well so you have the background the you know like the academic background but what you do in your job is another experience that you don't get in your study so yeah i can i would do another master degree or keep working or like you know getting deeper in what i'm doing okay that was a very brilliant answer that is described uh, your answer described the difference between phd and a master degree but Let's stop right there. Lillian, you will answer the questions on the chat box later. We shall continue with the, um, um, the sharing session from alumni, yeah? Okay, who will go first? Uh, Mbak Nadira or Mbak Atika? 
I think Batika, right? You can go first. Oh, okay. Uh, because I asked, uh, okay. Um, so uh, Lillian asked me to make us some slides. I did make a very basic, basic slides. I didn't really have time to prepare one, but I guess um, I will just tell you what I have been doing in the UK during my study. Uh, I'm not really familiar with Zoom. Do you see my screen or not? Yes, yes, very good, very clear. Uh, you might want to put into slide two. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, so studying at Sussex Uni, maybe uh, I'll give you some background why I decided to do a master degree before uh, studying in the in Sussex. I already work at the French Development Agency, where I had the first experience working in development. Uh, but I started with, you know, like being project assistant and then was promoted to project officer. But then I realized, you know, like I want to be more impactful. I want to be uh, doing something more specific to have an expertise specifically in something. I was hesitating between gender or climate change because at that time, gender was really, you know, big. Like every project, you need to have this gender element to be taken into account. But then climate change becomes a very hot topic and then i thought why not i'm gonna do climate change because it's also very inter it's an interdisciplinary uh, topic uh, i was doing projects in energy and infrastructure and it's completely related to climate change so i did some research and of course sussex came came out first and uh so i chose sussex i apply in sussex uh, I got accepted and it turns out to be in Brighton, which is another, you know, it's a cherry on top. Um, so yeah, studying in Sussex has been the best decision uh, for my life, you know, like for my academic decision. Uh, the lectures were good. I, I studied climate change development and policy. So uh, this course is under global studies, IDS and SPRU. So I got like the best of everything. Uh, it's a master of science. So I got the science of climate change from the geography department of global studies. I decided to also take the energy policy that's from SPRU, which is one of the best thing bank in, the U in, in, in Europe. And then IDS for, uh, you know, like uh, climate resilience. So you, you really have the freedom to choose whatever you're interested in. And that's something that I really liked uh, from Sussex. And the atmosphere is really good. You have students, friends from all over the world. As Lindsay said, you know, I had friends from India, Pakistan, Rwanda, from everywhere, from, you know, like people, like most British students were fresh graduates and uh, like international students, they tend to have more experience. So it's a quite interesting experience. And because I had been working for a while, I felt that I click more with people that have professional background um, and uh, yeah, so this is the pictures, some picture from our, uh, from my time. So um, people are from over the world, the, the, the lecturers are great. Uh, Sussex offered a lot of support, you know, like this is the picture in the train station when Nanias and I just arrived, we were welcome in the train station. Like they really helped, you know, like picked up students at the train station, took us by bus or by car to the, Palmer station and we found our housing and these are like different events you know like there is a lot of activities I did uh, societies like dog walking societies that's really cool after you have like stressful courses or lectures or essays you know like it's really an interesting and fun activities to do and it's just behind the library and another thing that I really like from Sussex is to locate it in the national park so that's another bonus I did enjoy a lot of activities outside of campus. I did, you know, like uh, participate in some, uh, uh, some uh, how do you call it, like not strike, but you know, this is a demonstration of climate change. I did this uh, food bank outside of university. I think also because I had been working before and I felt a bit older than others, I didn't really do a lot of societies within campus. I did a lot of activities outside of campus. 
so that's really up to you to do what you want, but there is a lot of choices of activities that you can do. And Brighton itself, it's amazing. The cultural diversity is there. Like you don't feel like a stranger. You like usually if you go, if I go abroad to Europe, people will ask me where I'm from. In Brighton, they never ask you where I'm from, you know, like you just feel that you belong there. And they're surprised actually sometimes when you say like, actually, I'm not from Brighton, you know. So that's pretty cool. The nature is there. You have the beach and you have the national park. So I guess not a lot of cities have both. Uh, it's not far from London. So if you want to go like to see like bigger city, uh, because Brighton is not that big. So it's just one hour away. There's a lot of activities to do. And then you can travel all over the UK and in, uh, not Indonesia uh, and Europe. And so that's the story when I was studying that there's a lot of activities, great lectures, like Lindsay has explained all the activities or lectures and benefit that you can do, that you can get in Sussex. And so my life after Sussex, I, I was lucky enough to get a job just before I came back home. Uh, I... I am now working as energy advisor at the FCDO British Embassy Jakarta, but before this role, I was working for still the UK Department of International Trade, uh, still on energy. But the reason why I took my master at Sussex was more to work on policy. That's what I put in my, uh, what was it, the essay that you need to do when you apply for the for the uh, for the course and my chivening and so that I'm doing what I wanted to do uh, no, now I'm working a lot with the uh, Ministry of Energy in Indonesia to support them on their on their uh, energy transition program we have a bilateral program so we really try to lobby the government uh, to move forward uh, you know, like to, to, call, to face out coal as soon as possible. We managed to lobby them to, to make them commit to do the coal phase out by the 2040s on the last COP26. These all the pictures actually when I brought the delegation of the ministry to the UK on COP26 last November. So we went to Brighton, this is in Brighton. We went to see the, uh, the uh, offshore wind, uh, you know, on the beach of Brighton. Uh, we went to Scotland, we were all over the place. Uh, we had meetings with the UK companies on renewable energy. So it has been really, really uh, interesting. And I learned, uh, I learned and I'm learning a lot of things, you know, so uh, from my uh, course on the energy policy, like you learn like the basic of energy policy, but now you kind of need to apply that as well as take into account the Indonesian context because you also need to understand that there is the things that you you have the theory but then the implementation in different region can be different and also like the politics political economy and everything so everything that I was learning have been useful not only from the energy policy but on the whole course has been really really helpful so this the study that I did was completely relevant to what I did. So um, yeah, if what I can say, maybe for those interested in studying development studies, maybe yeah, know what you want and then yeah, it will help you to choose the best or the most suitable program for you to, to help you find the right career. So I think that's all from me. Maybe I will, yeah. I did more, less than 10 minutes, but I think that's better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mbatika. Let's continue with Mbak Nadira. All right, um, just wait a moment. Now you can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nadira. I was graduated from MA Governance and Development and Public, Pol Development and Public Policy um, from Institute of Development Studies in uh, University of Sussex. So um, uh, I think some of um, the experience already shared by um, Batika and Lindsay before, but uh, okay, let's just move on. Um, yeah, so yeah, why Sussex? So you can see from uh, the pictures and the right of the slide so you can tell like how fun it is um there okay i think it's very clear like 
Sussex has the best university for development studies for I think six years in a row. So I think maybe that's the reason why you are come here uh, because you're interested in here. And then, um, yeah, for diversity, um, it's very diverse. So uh, my class, my batch was in 20 for MA Gov, government governance, and uh, 2018 and 2019, there were like, I think there were uh, 40 of us, but and 40 of they had like 30, something nationalities so you can tell how diverse it is and oh before that let me um maybe i will have to uh, tell you the background a brief background of my um career before uh sussex so i was working at um the government for, who in charge of the national development planning so i think that it gives the reasons why i took a governance and development public policy because i was um I had experience in sustainable development develop, sustainable development goals so so that's why um okay moving back to sussex um yeah it's the best uh, university for development studies and also it's very diverse uh i told you there are 30 nationalities from 40 of us by the time and you know like when you studied uh, development studies you want to know um exactly uh what happens in another country is how the development planning going, how the experience, how the politics, how the, you know, like everything. So I think it really, really helps me, you know, you to have a lot of people who are coming from different um, nationalities and come together sitting in a class and, you know, discuss about um, our each, I mean, our own countries. So, and also it's very, you know, it's positive atmosphere to learn. So fellows are, very accessible so i think the reasons why um that i really like the most from from sussex is because you know it's very easy to get connect to uh, the lecturers and for very easy uh, you know um if you know uh, richard jolie so i really really you know like admired him uh, his uh, economic uh development economics like what uh, economists from you know like one of the best in the world so um, I really, you know, like I really want to um, to talk, to discuss to him while I was there. So it's just very easy to, you know, to connect to him. I was just sending him email, asking if him if he has some times because I want to, you know, discuss about SDGs, about uh, his um, experience in uh, UNICEF and you know a lot of things and he was just very you know like very crazily replying my email and saying okay let's do this and then we chat over you know like a coffee or tea or something so it's very very fun and a lot of it happens to another fellows as well so you know like it's very um it's very it's very fun it's very it's very helpful if you have that kind of you know um positive atmosphere to learn and Sussex so also provides not only theoretical knowledge, but also practical training. Um, like for me, because I just like um, Batika, I also uh, worked several years before I went to Sussex. And I, because I'm, I, I mean, it depends on the people, but for me, I'm not really into academia and I don't have any academy plan for my future. So I'm really into uh, practical training. So that's why I came to the, uh, Sussex. And I think they provide me not only, you know, like um, readings, what, what you can get from readings and uh, presentations, but also they give you uh, like how to do this and how to do that. And I will give you the example that after this light and it is located in brighton so i think no one hate brighton you know no one hates brighton like everyone really loves brighton and i actually i didn't really expect anything from brighton i know it's very diverse um and it's very i mean it looks very very fun and you can't really you know like some of um uh, the areas in the uk's um the uk's are you know like very gloomy and mostly glo gloomy and you know rainy or uh, you know all day long but brightens i mean there's a reason they call you bright on because it's very very bright and it's very colorful and it's very very fun so yeah and i had a very very fun there very very time there so um you can see from uh, the pictures here um uh, we were really close to uh all the people in uh my class and also outside the class so it's like basically um from here we have uh like tea time with all the fellows also from from uh, my diverse pictures and also we have this non-birthday 
non-birthday birthday party because you don't have to have birthday to have birthday party right and also like this uh we went to one of the fellows a uh, senior fellows uh house to have a dinner and you know just hang out and yeah so it was really really fun um so jobs after development studies i think some of the jobs are already explained uh very well by lindsay and also by atika but uh this is what i mentioned before about the training um the practical training that i did help me to get a job um after graduate so here's uh it depends again it depends on the uh the um the class but for MA governance, development, and public policy in my year, we had this training for applied critical thinking. Um, so we have this session for autumn term and also for our spring term. But you can see like here, um, in the first day we went to the campus, we had, you know, the first week, we had the critical reading skills because, you know, we came from different countries, right? I mean, various countries. So we have to get used to the um, UK academic system. And they really teach us like how to have the reading skills that help you to understand a lot of readings because, you know, when it comes to master, you have a lot of readings and also how to write and how so um, you can see like this, like designing governance indexes uh, and also enabling local governance uh, because most of us has different, I mean, it has, um, interested in, in politics and also in, in, in how the work, how the government works. So we went also to the local government there and then we discussed. And yeah, I mean, it's really, really helped me to, you know, to have that uh, proper, uh, what can I say, like, like training and something that I can, I, it, it is useful for me after, um, after the study. And yeah, I mean, the jobs of development studies, um, some of our friends uh, working in government, private sector, NGO, some of their academia, uh, international organizations and media. And yeah, and also what helps me a lot, like after I graduate is because of the networks. So um, again, like um, Batika was uh, very, um, very, I'm very, I'm very grateful enough because I can, you know, I, I wrote it, I wrote in the essays and the achievement and also in um, the Sussex that I really wanted to, like after study, I want to work in uh, executive office of the president. And now I'm working at the executive office of the president. And um, it really, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like uh, the master degree really helped me, you know, to get the ticket because I already uh, went there and then I, you know, I have the network and I just use it. And also, inter oh, also about networks, um, like people in um, my company in, in, in Sussex really helped me as well to get a job. For example, I had an offer because uh, my friend from Switzerland, he, she, uh, she knows what I'm doing and she knows what I want to do like after this and everything. So she kind of like over me to, uh, to get a job also in one of the INGO. Um, so I think it's really, really helpful, you know, to have that kind of networks as well from, uh, the place you study, right? And also in interpersonal skills as well, and yeah, the ambitions. Like what I mean by ambitions is like again what like what um, I think I say like you have to know like what you want to do like after this. So it helps you to get where you are right now. Um, yeah, I think that's all. I don't know if it's like more than ten minutes or less than ten minutes, but yeah, I get back to you, Pahendra. That was actually very interesting. Um, very nice information from both of you. Uh, you described well of Brighton. I'm not actually aware about Bright on previously, but now I'm aware about it. I always like, I always enjoy my visits to Brighton. Um, yes, the city is very compact. To me, it's it's very compact, and I can reach out to one spot to another easily. Uh, go to Sussex, I mean, go to the university pretty easy as well. Um, well, uh, I think I went by train from the city center to the university before. Uh, in, I didn't try my, I didn't try the bus though. Uh, I assume it should be nice. Now, let's start. Um, question and answer. I'll invite uh, siapapun Dari sini yang ikutan ya, boleh silahkan bertanya yang berhubungan dengan um, 
kuliah development studies berhubungan dengan kehidupan sebagai mahasiswa di sana jangan ditanyain dulu jajannya apa aja ya di Brighton biasanya jajannya nggak aneh-aneh Brighton itu jajannya paling jajan apa ya fish fish and chip oke okay. what was the most favorite food you had when you were in Brighton Mbak Atika um uh that's difficult to answer um actually uh the fact that you live with people with students coming from different countries we do a lot of fusion food foods you know in my house we have pakistanis we have turkish we have chinese we have american so sometimes you make indonesian food like tempeh but then you have like uh, a turkish meal and then you make samosa you know like i i think it's just We keep saying that to ourselves, you know, this can't happen in many places, you know, and in other mm-hmm. house, in our neighbor might be different because they have, they are from Iran, they are from, you know, Bangladesh, so the fusion will be different. So if you ask me what my favorite food is, uh, it it's, I don't know, uh, if you ask me about British food, I think I like, uh, I like cottage pie, uh, mm. but my favorite food in In Brighton, uh, no, I don't know actually. <laughs> uh, we do go out a lot, but then like if you just try different thing. My favorite restaurant is still Thai restaurant, so it's not very original from where I'm from. But mm-hmm. the Siam Siam is really good, so that's my favorite place. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's more like I would go more like for. To explore, you know, like the UK experience, you go to pub and then you have like hot chocolates during winter, uh, just to experience the whole thing. Okay, cool. Uh, sebentar Mas Fitra, sebentar saya tanya ya, apa pertanyaannya Mbak Atika, eh Mbak Atika, Mbak Nandira. So what was your favorite food? I know I have one favorite food in Brighton. What is it? It was, I went to one restaurant um, in the corner. It was a noodle question oh yeah 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 that's right um there's a little uh, soup i guess Did yeah 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 so that's my favorite too that that one is like them, so. quite popular um a huge portion of noodle exactly that was amazing did yeah, you go yeah. to the same place yeah it's my favorite food as well i remember <laughs> when whenever we feel like oh we're very stressed out because of the readings and class and everything we just like go straight to the city center and went to uh, the noodle soup it's really nice i think it's owned by malaysian so yeah it's really you know it's very reminds us of home so it's my favorite food as well <laughs> exactly right let's take the questions from mas fitra mas fitra ingin bertanya apa silahkan um Okay, thanks, Fred. Before I have a question uh, mm-hmm. for Nadira, Ba Nadira, dan Ba Atika. Um, mm-hmm. It's really nice to hear that you learn about development studies. So here I have a question: uh, After you have internship, actually in development studies in United Kingdom or some project in other NGO, mm-hmm. and how long it? You get it. Thanks. Mbak Atika, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, my course doesn't require to do an internship. Uh, some friends did do internship. I myself did not do any internship because I thought like uh, I've worked before. I'm just going to enjoy my time after my master to enjoy the UK. So I didn't do any internship. So I, re- I can't really say anything on that. <laughs> Yeah, same here. I was, you know, like, um, because I really had that in mind that I want to go to the UK for study and also play at the same time. So I traveling a lot, especially like a month after um, I finished my dissertations. I really travel like full of months going anywhere else. So I don't really, I didn't really take an internship. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> it, it's possible if we collaborate with our lecturers or some yeah. organization there to make some project. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, you can be research yeah. assistant, or even during your study. It doesn't have to be after your study. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Miss Lindsay, for your explanation in the chat. Okay, <laughs> thank you good. very much, Mas thanks Faisal. Everyone. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Pak Hendra, for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask uh, for both of you, Mbak Atika and Mbak Nandira, and it's great to hear your stories in the University of Sussex. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is related to your professional background. Is the professional background that you have help you during the application or selection during the University of Sussex? And maybe you can elaborate or tell us what's your professional background before you're getting admitted to the university. And the second one is related to the scholarship or the funded that you gain during the program. If we all to know where you gain the scholarship or maybe how you funded the program. Thank you. You wanna go ahead, Nadira? Uh, yeah, for the first question, so I think already I mentioned before that uh, I had, actually I had various um, fields in mean, background. I worked, I, mean, I had a background in NGOs, um, as well government, um, private sector, uh, so, but mostly in, in government. So I was working at the Ministry of National Development Planning before I went to uh, Sussex. So that's why I chose a governance, development and public policy, because I want to, you know, um, learn more about uh, how the government works and how to make a good uh, pu public policy. So, yeah. And then for the second question, um, you asked about the, the scholarship, right? Yeah, correct. Or how did you find, find it? the program during your time there? Okay, um, so me and also Mbatika as well, uh, we had scholarship, um, I mean, we had Chevening scholarship. It's uh, from the UK, um, I mean, British government. So um, yeah, by the time we had that, we had we already had the um, LOA from Sussex and I really want to go there. And then at the same time I got um, the, um, acceptance letter in June. So it's like after after I got the LOA from Sussex first. So yeah, I think, and I think, I think there are several also uh, options to go to, to study in the UK, right? You have LPDP and also you have, and also I think uh, Sussex also has a scholarship. So yeah. Um, okay. So I'll add to Nadira, I think there are some questions uh, uh, from you asking whether it's possible to study development study when you have completely different bachelor degree or experience. So my personal experience, my bachelor degree was actually French and communications. So I was working in those areas for a while, but I had been really interested in sustainable development until I landed a job at the French development uh, bank. Uh, that's where my interest grew even more and then that's where I realized that to be more appreciated to be expert you need to get a master degree so that's where I decided to apply for achieving scholarship because I knew what I want uh, I wanted to focus on climate change uh, especially on the energy sector and I wanted to work on policy so uh, if you apply for a scholarship especially achieving they need to see the consistency of your uh, your, not your background doesn't really matter what you're doing or what you want to do in the future. So that if it's consistent, that's like, uh, you know, that's what they're looking for. I mean, I can tell because now like I'm looking for application for Shivening. So if you apply for a Shivening scholarship, you need to be consistent in, in what you want to do. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it's possible because I studied French and now I work on the energy and climate change and development and policy it was a master Master of Science, so my brain was actually dead when I was studying. It was completely, it was difficult, but you manage. Uh, as Vince said, like the first weeks or six weeks, I think it was really, really difficult. When we did our first meeting, uh, the lecturer actually asked us to write 500 word essay. My essay was really, really, really bad. But then, yeah, they gave you feedback and you made, you made improvement. Like basically on my first essay, the first model, I, I ended up like having the best score. So I'm like, oh, it, it worked, you know, if you want to do it. And then if you listen to feedback, you can do it. Um, yeah, for uh, scholarship, yeah, we went, we got scholarship. So uh, yeah, we were pretty lucky. So because, because it's quite expensive, but yeah, as Nadira said, Anani said, there is a lot of, options of scholarship that you can apply to. 
And in terms of timeline, I think, uh, yeah, you need to be strategic in doing your application. I myself started with the Chivening Scholarship first. Uh, uh, and then while doing the Chivening, I did my IELTS. So when I apply for the uh, Sussex, I already have my IELTS because I think it helps. I mean, I would want, I want it myself when I have the letter of acceptance, it would be unconditional, but I think everyone is different, you know, I'd like, I'd like to get everything done in advance. So yeah, you need to make a good plan. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's continue to Mbak Ulfa atau Mas Ulfa ini, Fasumara Ulfa. Can you Hendra, on? I have one last, one last question. Oh, okay. Okay, but it's for uh, Rinci, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay. If I have been submitted the application by uh, this week, is it possible to receive, uh, say, within four weeks since I'm trying to plan the program or the scholarship <laughs> For with the deadline at the end of the May. Thank you. Uh, that question. Yeah, Lillian should answer. Lillian, over to you. Yeah, sorry. Um, may I know what course are you looking at? Uh, the course is the Climate Change Development and Policy Master of Science. Okay. Um, and you need the offer by before the end of May. Yeah, correct. Okay, as I mentioned in the chat box, because currently we are facing a very, very, very high volume of applications. So currently we takes about four eight to six weeks to process the applications. Normally, we normally take about two to four weeks, but now we have to take about four to six weeks. But for your case, if you can submit your application by this week, what I can help and do is that I will make a note to our admission team saying that because you are rushing for the scholarships and we need the decisions by the end of May, then I have then we will have to see whether our admission is able to rush for you. So I cannot guarantee, but this is what we can help. So you need to submit your application as early as possible to IBAC and then uh, we will work on that uh, from then onwards. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No problem. Waduh, saya dikasih PR sama Mas Faisal ini. Mas kasih PR-nya jangan yang susah-susah, Mas. Kita lagi setengah mati, ramai aplikasi. Aduh. Oke, okay, Mas Faisal, can you please keep in touch with me? Um, I want you to send your documents by today. I'm going to Mbak Iva. Mbak Iva already. Oke, okay, I'll speak to Mbak Iva. After this, I will have uh, an offline event. I'm currently in Yogyakarta. I'm talking, I'll be talking to UGM lecturer. But tonight, I will check the document. And if possible, I'll submit it tonight. Okay? And you, I hope we will get the answer very soon. Okay. Mbak Ulfa. Um, hello. Thank you for ah. the chance. Okay. Um, my question is like um if um we already received an acceptance letter for a university however we haven't received uh, any scholarship uh yet mm -hmm. like is it possible that uh, do we need to reschedule our uh, acceptance letter to join the university or or, or what <laughs> if uh if uh, until the you know the date that we have to join the university we still haven't received any scholarship like what are we supposed to do or is there any way uh thank you all right lillian all right thanks um okay there is a deadline to accept the offer stated in your offer letter if i'm not mistaken your offer letter deadline should be first of june so my suggestion is to accept the offer now Okay, because by accepting the offer doesn't mean that you are committed and have to make the payment. No, accepting the offer is like, in other words, you are booking your place. So once you book the place, we will reserve the place for you. So if by September, very near to the intake, and it's confirmed that you're not able to make it for this September, then you can write in to us or to IBAC and then we will request for a deferral. Depending what course are you applying to, if development studies, 
just please take note, everyone, whoever applying to development studies, we do not allow deferral. So if you can't make it for this year, you have to reapply for next year. But any other courses, most likely we allow deferral and it's only once deferral. So we will ask for deferral, then we will, we will move it on to the following year. So suggestion is to accept the offer now. Don't wait till 1st of June because by then you have forgotten about the deadline and you missed the deadline. And when we release the seats to another student and it's full, then it's full, then you have to reapply again. So my suggestion is just to accept now. You are not committed. It's okay. We don't impose any penalty if you're not coming. All right. So you're not, not like you have to pay fine or anything. It's just, just, just to book your place. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind uh, explanation about that. Uh, I'm just wondering like, whether once we already received the acceptance letter, for example, like uh, we already confirmed to the university that um, we would love to come. Um, however, we didn't receive any scholarship yet. Uh, is it possible that we negotiate with the university to reschedule our like um, program, like maybe into next semester or something like that? No, you can't. Um, we have only one intake, one commencement date, which is September. If you couldn't get your scholarship on time because we have the late arrival date. So normally the late arrival, it's um, the first week of October normally. So you have to arrive by the first week of October. If you can't make it, then you have to defer. There is no way that you can join the second semester. It doesn't work this way. You have to start from the first semester, go on to the second semester and go on to your final um, summer term, which is your dissertation term. So it has to flow this way. You can't skip the first semester and then you know you can't do that. It has to flow um, accordingly. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lillian. No problem. Okay, next. Other questions from other students? Mbak Ulfa, mau tanya lagi? Sorry, it's a, it's a mistake. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I mistyped it. Okay. Um, ada lagi yang ingin bertanya? Masih ada yang malu-malu? Nggak ada yang tanya sama Mbak Nadira atau Mbak Atika? Di sana ada ini nggak? Ada Indomie nggak? Gitu. Ada... <laughs> Tetap okay. jadi life saver. <laughs> jadi life saver, oke. Okay. Okay. Um, di sana makan roti apa makan nasi, Mbak Tika, Mbak Nadira? Campur dua-duanya. Dua-duanya. Oh, nasi. Aku nasi. tidak makan roti. Iya, sama kayak saya kalau makan roti lemes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this is a very nice question. Linchi, would you like to answer the, the, the newest one? Do the university location near with Brighton and Hove Albion Stadium? Yes, just across the road. It's about, I don't know, 300 meters or 400 meters, maybe. So you can walk there in five minutes. Oh. Sometimes you do exam there. Oh, oh really? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, dekat sekali kan, seru kan? Um, anything else? Lilian, would you like to say anything? Would you like to add up something? Um, nothing much, but just just I find it. This is really really helpful, useful sessions. I think. Um, um, I also learned quite a lot from, of course, Dr. Lindsay, you know, um, about the development studies and Natira and Atika, you shared your experience. I believe students has, you know, gained a lot of insights about, you know, what ca can they do after development studies? In fact, for my job, meeting so many students, a lot of students ask me, what can they do after the study development studies? Because we are so popular with this program, you know, so um, I think uh, this is really, really good. Um, I think just to add on, um, this year is a very, very, I would say it's a very different year for Sussex. Um, we are facing, as I mentioned, we are facing very high volume of applications. 
we are still accepting applications. Just, just take note. We are still accepting applications, but um, don't wait. I know some of you might not have taken IELTS, you know, but you still can apply without IELTS, and then you can submit later. So um, don't wait, as I because because as I said, we have very high volumes of applications. We take very long time to process at the moment, and a lot of places are start closing because uh, closing as in we stop taking application because it's sort of full. So um, especially anything to do with development that is quite a popular program. So I would definitely strongly encourage you to consider putting your applications as soon as possible. And then only then you can also start preparing your, um, your um, IELTS and other funding um, uh, support that you need. And um, I have created uh, offer holder groups, for those who are holding an offer for, from Sussex. I will be sending you an invitation. So please join the offer holder groups. I will also invite Natiran and Atika to join the offer holder group. So that groups will share a lot of information like places to eat. You know, I will have my current students from different countries, you know, um, sharing the accommodations. I think a lot of students would like to know about accommodations. How is the campus look like? You know, um, what do you need to prepare? Tips tips to score a you know i just uh, i just heard from one of my vietnamese students because he's he is a first class honor student and he pursue his phd now so he's sharing with me how he did so well you know and what is his tip so he, he was sharing with me so i will ask him to post the tips in the offer holder group so hopefully for those who are holding an offer you can join watch out the email from us any email from sussex please read. I know a lot of people read and live it. So please read, understand anything, go back to iBag or myself. That's all. Thank you so much, Paendra. All right, Lillian, one more thing. Can you please write down your email on the chat box so anyone can also get in touch with you? Thank you. I am going down to, I'm going to write down my email, all right, and also my WhatsApp number. I'm happy for any one of you to WhatsApp me. Yes, um, please. Yeah, so this is my email address and my WhatsApp number as well. Thank you. Lindsay, thank you so much for putting down your email. That's good. I would be more than happy also to be in touch with you should we have any certain questions from potential students, yeah? Okay, your WhatsApp. All right, students, don't forget to screenshot. That will be faster. There you go. You can screenshot and it will be, you can keep in touch. You can try to contact Lillian or Lindsay if you need to ask anything related to the university. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure everyone is preparing to have an IFTA or breakfasting now. So thank you so much for attending the session. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you, Mbak Nadira, Mbak Atika. Appreciate your attendance very much. We shall meet you again on other webinar. I hope next time it will be offline. That's, that's one thing that I want, right? Thank you so much. See you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.